special property of a function relative to vector spaces. It preserves everything that vector spaces can do. There's no mention of multiplication of vectors by vectors. There's no mention of division. These are things that are special to R of the field as opposed to R1 of the vector space. Or R2, or R3, or so on. Just really quickly, if you've seen complex numbers, you know that they have a, this is the symbol for complex numbers. They have a real and imaginary part, right? One real number determines the real part, one real number determines the, determines the imaginary part, so to say it slowly, it'll come out. So these are really, when you add two complex numbers, you just add the real parts and you add the imaginary parts. That's just like vector addition. Right? When you multiply a complex number by a real number, you multiply the real part by the real number, and you multiply the complex part by the real number. Right? That's just like scalar multiplication. So you see that there's a direct mapping between R2 and C. We're over here. We can talk about addition and multiplication. Over here, though, we have C the field not see the vector space of real numbers. And so we can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Not scalar multiplication, in this case it's not the same. The base field is no longer just R. So we can multiply complex numbers together, unlike what we could do with two-dimensional vectors. For two-dimensional vectors, we don't have such a thing. Does this make sense? Let me make sure we're talking about what we're talking about. So this is the special property. This such function R all linear. study of linear algebra is all about. It's about the study of linear functions. And well, you've actually seen examples of not linear functions, but things that had the same form. They were operations. They didn't act on vector spaces. Well, maybe I should take that back. Maybe they kind of did act on vector spaces, but they weren't Rn and Rm. They were functions. They acted on functions. And the examples, well, if we think of linear algebra as the study of all linear functions and all vector spaces, then we should talk about these two examples. So there's the derivative and the derivative of the sum, you remember, is the sum of the derivative, derivatives, and of course the derivative of a scalar multiple of a function was Remember, you can just move that outside the derivative. And this was very useful in calculus. Also, the integral of sums is the sum of the integrals. And similarly, Like you can here. So these were called these were called uh, linear operations that you could perform on functions. You could really think of these functions as forming a vector space. You can add functions together to get a new function, right? 
to set their output. And you can um, uh, multiply a scalar by a function to get a new function. So it's really closed under these operations. Our operations keep us inside the set of functions. And so the set of functions really is a vector space. It gets more and more complicated when we think about what is the dimension of that vector space. Um, what are the A vector, let's say we had, oh, what's that column? That column is 7, 8, 9. So this was a three dimensional vector. This was entry 1, entry 2, and entry 3. If we had a function that went from the numbers 1, 2, 3 into, I don't know, some space that has 7, 8, and 9 in it, then we could have thought of this as a function that the 1 gives you that, the 2 gives you this, and the 3 gives you that. We had another function in the same, with the same type. The output of this one was at one was instead three. This one at two was two. And the, and the output of three was one. And we can think of that as a vector like this. When we add them together, we're really just adding the outputs of these two functions. Now, if instead of the inputs being one, two, and three, the inputs are any real number, of thinking of, well, it's not a, a vector like that we can write like this anymore, but it's something similar. I shouldn't go into to that too much. I should stop for today. But uh, you can see that there's, if, if linear algebra is the study of these things, then calculus is entirely the study of these two linear operations. Take two special linear operations in a special vector space, and then calculus is completely the study of that sort of linear system. Now, I have to convince you that we've already been talking about linear functions in this class. And the function that we've been talking about, let's say f of x goes from, let's preserve the type rm to rn. f is going to be the same function. And f of x is going to be equal to ax, where a is a, oh, let's see, the input has to be, uh, it has to have n, m entries, right? It's from rm, so it has m entries. And it has, the output has n entries. So what would the dimensions of that vector be? The, the vector is going to be something by something, and it's going to be multiplied by a m by one matrix to give me an n, an n by one matrix. So what does it have to be? Do you remember what I said about this? The kind of clever way to remember if you have the right dimensions? For the matrix, these two things have to match. Otherwise, the multiplication isn't defined. If this has m entries, so if x is equal to x1, x2, down to xm, and we multiply this by a matrix, we take it, we take it and flip it on its side and multiply it by the columns. So this thing, A, has to have m columns for this to be defined. And how many entries is the output going to have? It's going to have as many as there are rows. It has to have n of them, so this has to be an m by in a matrix. So we didn't get through just the two sections today, that's fine. Now how do I convince you that this is true? The book does it, and I'm going to do it in the exact same way. Actually, it did it in a previous section, and we didn't talk about it. So this multiplication right here, we 
uh, we have to show, in order for this to be a linear, linear function, we have this weird habit whenever we talk about vector spaces or linear algebra in general. We have different names for everything. Functions aren't called functions. So note this in your notes. They're called transformations. It's just a weird habit. I guess a hangover from a time when we thought about this area of math that talked about functions and the area of math that talked about linear systems were somehow different. Anyway, they're called linear transformations, and so that's what we'll call them in this class. So we want to show that this, this transformation is a linear transformation. Uh, maybe afterwards I'll give an example of one that isn't, but definitely is not. Okay, so how do we do this? We're, we're used to phase one, we're used to writing the matrix A like this. So the A1, A, each A, each little A, represents a column of the matrix A. And we represent X like this, X1, and what else? Let's go back and look at what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove that if the input is U plus V, then we'll get the output F of U plus F of V. So let's, let's go straight to that. The input to this is gonna be U plus V. So the first entry is going to be whatever the first entry of u is plus whatever the first entry of v is. The second will be say it, all the way down to um plus vm. Tip it on its side, multiply them out together. a1 times u1 plus v1 plus a2 times this is just a vector multiplied by a real number. The convention is to write the, multiple, the scalar multiple on the left-hand side, but we know by the commutivity of multiplication and the real numbers, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter which side we put it on, but just for the sake of not confusing ourselves. dot, 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 up to um plus vm am. Now we use the distributive property for vectors. Uh, this, the, this, the, um, the one that lets us distribute across addition of scalars, whichever one that, that one was. Rule, rule four. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. So let's distribute it like this. U1, A1, plus B, B1, A1. U2, A2, plus B2, A1, B2, A2. There we go. Okay, dot, dot, dot. Let's go, let's go down with, with the dots this time. UM, foreshadowing. Okay, we got it right. So these two things are equal. And now what I see is that that sum right there is just, yep, you got it, A times U. And this sum right here. We got it even quicker this time. This is a plus b. And this up here, what we started off with, this was a times b plus b. So we at least got addition. Okay? Now do the same thing for multiplication. The exact same thing. So we'll bore you with that. Now the book gives special examples of linear transformations, a shear transformation, a contraction or a dilation. These are fun examples. Oh, and a rotation. Actually, much more interesting. Um, 
it's interesting that we can take a vector and think of it geometrically. Uh, let's, let's draw a shape. Smiley face. Okay, so this smiley face, I mean, it looks, it's funny, but it can also be described as a set, right? All of the points that lie on one of these lines right here. So there's a little line there, there's a little line there, right? So it's a collection of R2s, right? A collection of two-dimensional real vectors that make up this face. Now there is some matrix that I can multiply by this that will actually take all of those, all these points, go like this, like this, and it will actually rotate them. What am I wanting there? 45 degrees. So what I get is this instead. Um, if you if you study maybe computer graphics, I'll say. Oh, that was you. You study computer graphics in the course of studying about computer programming. What you'll find is that a lot of times these transformations that we do in, in graphics, they correspond, there's some linear transformation that corresponds to them. Oh, I'm gonna spoil the punchline. <laughs> what, I, what I just showed, what we just showed together, was that every matrix gives you a linear transformation, right? From some Rm to some Rn. What I'm gonna try to show you on Monday, as quickly as possible, so that we can do other stuff as well, is that it goes in the other direction as well. Any linear transformation that you can come up that you can come up with that goes from some finite dimensional real vector space to some other finite dimensional real vector space gives you a matrix. There's a matrix that does that exact same thing. And the reason I mentioned computer graphics and all of this is that what is a what is a matrix multiplication or a linear transformation? It just involves multiplying a bunch of numbers together and then adding them. And if you can do this very quickly, then you can do all of these interesting graphical things that you might want to do very quickly. And because people do want to do these things, I don't know if you've ever heard of computer games, they've gotten pretty big at this point. Um, this is such a important use case of computers <clears throat> that processors are now designed specifically so they can do multiplications and additions very, very quickly. Lots of them all at the same time. And this is what GPUs are. They are computers with a bunch of cores in them that will do precisely what we've been doing, these multiplications and additions, all at the same time very, very quickly. And that is the moral of the story. Okay. I guess that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. If you're um, annoyed that I haven't actually put up a Zoom link for my office hours, which I said I was going to do, let me know. I'm hoping no one is. Uh, if you, I, I'm going straight to my office right now, just as I almost always do. You can just call. Yep, see ya.